bomb. Mm, that mm. happens. Mm -hmm. You but do that too. All the time. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm a ripe old 23 still. Yeah. Getting old. <laughs> Feel 40. With the Golden Globe nominations recently announced, yeah. the uh, movie award season buzz has already begun. And this year, one film just may be the sleeper hit of the season, Children of Men, believe it yeah. or not. We recently uh, we sat down with director Alfonso Caron and cast members Clive Owen and Claire Hope a Ashby to see what the buzz is all about. Set in a futuristic London 2027, where no child has been born in 18 years, Children of Men is brought to life by director Alfonso Cuaron, most well known for Itu Mama Tambien. The film isn't all dark, though. The story is ignited by hope with the discovery of one final pregnant woman. She's pregnant. Now you know what's at stake. As a director, I cannot impose a sense of hope, if I want to be honest. I can present a world give a glimpse of a possibility of hope, but depends in, the, in, in every member of the audience to decide if hope is possible. Why do you think we can't make babies anymore? Doesn't matter. It's all over in 50 years. Oscar winner Clive Owen plays the unlikely hero who ushers a very frightened key, played by newcomer Claire Hope Ashity, on a tumultuous journey. He's one of the most unconventional lead characters I've ever come across. Listen, I don't quite know what's going on. We collectively created a very pathetic, flawed, fallible human being that is reluctant to begin with. You know, doesn't even want to be in the story. What are you talking about? And then eventually is sort of reawakened. It's very true and it's very honest, you know, because you see films that were made in the 80s about, you know, 2002, and they've got all these kind of crazy white robots sort of walking around and, you know, we don't have that. And I think what that realism gives us is the ability to relate to what's, hap to what's happening in the movie. Julianne Moore and Michael Caine arrive to help restore a future to the planet and add weight to this already very full film. Oh my finger, quick, it's quick. It's more relevant than a lot of films that are set right now. Weird to say that a film is set in the future, but the opening scene of the movie, a guy walks into a cafe, buys a cup of coffee, walks out, and a bomb goes off. That's not science fiction. That's as tangible as anything going on. Already generating an Oscar buzz, Children of Men comes to theaters soon. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Children of Men opens in limited release on Christmas, but if the buzz is right, this is one you're going to want to track down for sure. It's worth the drive. Yes. Now it is time for number 29 on our top video. Layla recently took part in an event to help needy children. And uh, we don't mean kids having temper tantrums until they get a PlayStation 3. Now she went down with the U.S. Marines to lend a hand with Toys for Tots. Take a look. What's up, you guys? I'm hanging out at Howie's in Mission Viejo with the Marines who are going to be putting their combat training to the test and playing some civilians in Battlefield 2. Now, if you guys want to put your medal to the test, all you got to do is come on down and bring some toys for tots. We wanted to find a cool, interesting way of doing the Toys for Tots event, which is traditionally just bring a toy, drop it off. So we figured, why not get a platoon of Marines in here and see who would want to come and play against us. We play these games probably several hours a day. They're out there combat training. We're out here just playing the games. It's great that they defend our country and all, but we're just going to take them out here on our arena in the game. We're going to show them, you know what? We're going to pwn them. There is no lack of confidence whatsoever. That's the first and foremost thing. My predictions, it's just going to be a clean sweep. Well, my predictions today are real simple. We're going to show them how the real Marine Corps does it. Get some, boys. <laughs> Let the carnage begin. Hurrah! HGS, you up? Yeah. Marines, you ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right, spawn in. Let's get this going. Yeah. Ooh, baby. All right, Woo. HGS with a cap out. All right, round two. You guys got all? Yeah. All right. Can I take my car, man? I'm blowing you up. Out there, well, the prediction stands as is. We took them like we said we we're going to do it. Well, I'm going to say we fared pretty good today. I mean, even one toy is a success in our book. I mean, that's a one more family, one more kid that come Christmas morning gets to open up a gift. Well, the best part of the day was just coming out here having fun playing video games, you know. I was out here playing with the Marines, you know, toys for tots. I want to thank everybody for just putting this whole thing together for us. What do you say, rematch? Rematch, boys. Get it up! As always, next year. For more information on Gunner.
attention, everyone, attention. All right, everybody, I know we're all busy, but we need to take some time out for a mandatory meeting. Now, it's a mandatory meeting. See you all in the conference room in 10 minutes. McGunner, I'll see you there. Did you hear that, McGunner? The boss just called a mandatory meeting. <laughs> Let's see you get out of this one, McGunner. Even though I, Murdoch, your arch nemesis, will be trapped inside the confines of the conference room, I will delight in knowing that McGunner suffers alongside me. <laughs> Settle down. Settle down. Take a seat. I wanted to bring all of you here to let you know our company has lost a major source of funding. So I'm going to institute a 10% pay cut across the board. What? Anyone have any complaints? It's all right. McGonna, you okay with that? <laughs> Good man, McGonna. Team player. You'll go far. If you're stuck at home today, there's no better way to tune right, you know, I'll tell you what, Paris Hilton, there could be a oh, section no. <laughs> of Paris Hilton movies that uh, direct the DVD ones. This is Pledge This. They could even National Photoshop the dopey whore out of her face on the cover. It's still right there. Now, it looks, it looks good from the cover, <laughs> but, you know, we really need to see, has Paris Hilton's acting improved? Oh. Let's take a look at a clip. Watch. You know, I can't resist little, Derek. <laughs> little? Tiny. Like a baby. Hmm. Oh! Okay, anything, yeah, that's, any, that's about as dumb as it gets. That's anything awful. redeeming in this, though, at all? Uh, let me think. No. I mean, even the gross humor doesn't make any sense. They've got this suction device well, and foil. National and... Lampoons, I mean, come on, they're, they're, they're such high brother genius. Yeah, that brand is, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> lower and lower and lower. Goodbye. Well done, Paris. All right, Chris, cool. thank you, as Thanks always, again for, for having coming me. by. Again, happy holidays. Of Jar Jar Binks, which he won when Episode One came out. Now, he's not only the most sad man alive for having this. He's asking $400 on the auction that ends in a few hours. The catch is, however, you gotta pick it up from his Florida home, meaning you probably have to be seen in public with this thing. Yeah. And then you might get to ride in the uh, carpool lane or something. That'd be yeah. cool. <laughs> Zero bids, though? You'd think, uh, you know, some disgruntled fanboy would want to pick it up just to bash Jar Jar's head in with a crowbar. <laughs> Zach, seriously, though, what would you do if you had a life-size Jar Jar? If I had a life-size Jar Jar in my house? Two in the back of the head, and then nice. I'd probably skin them and make some boots and a diaper bag out of them. Oh, very nice. Now, from creepy to creepier, next we have a replica doll of the cheerleader from the NBC series, Heroes. Yeah. Now, there have been a lot of different Claire dolls on eBay lately, but this one is particularly disturbing. Note the uh, panties. That's creepy. Wait, it says 12-inch Heroes. Oh, good. Perfect size for me. <laughs> If, this is, uh, seriously, this is the kind of thing that the government should make a national registry for so that you know when the owner of this doll moves into your neighborhood. You can get on that, what's that, I forget that it's, it's, one yeah, online Yeah, that site. website. I can't remember what it is either, but the positioning of that was really creepy. Now, the opening bid, thirty nine ninety five, but that unclean feeling you'll be left with, priceless. priceless. Well, until next August, because then it's perfectly legal to have no. that. Next up, the world's first white PS3. Racist. Why'd they have to do this? The folks at PS3Gamer.net have completely painted one of their new consoles in white. My goodness. What's, what's next? I, I mean, don't this know. Is the thing is, it's a real auto body style paint job with a nice finish to it. It's not a couple of rednecks with a can of spray paint, no. you know, tainting it up. Not at all. <laughs> the auction is currently over $1,500 with 17 bids. Now, that's, that's a lot of money, but if that's too rich for your blood, throw down 20 bucks, get your own paint, go DIY sell. I'd paint mine paisley. I'd paint mine pink. Now, our final auction is one that completed last week, but it bears mentioning. Somebody paid $765 for the Willet Blend blended iPod. Seriously, 45 wow. bids duked it out for this auction. It seems ridiculous, seems crazy, but the proceeds... A German kid seems to be upset oh, this that, kid. that he can't play, uh, the, that he can't play oh, Unreal Tournament. Man, I hate this yeah. clip. 
He has he has himself a nice little nervous breakdown, and I, I I liked it when I did, and I thought it was real. Now I know it's fake. It's, it's just it's fun. lame. It's like it's worse yeah. than the chocolate milk kid. But fair but enough. I fun. understand I mean, why it's there. It was okay, popular. But here's the thing: is he's German, and who who the hell knows what the kid is saying? But it's crazy. Master race, my ass. I don't know. Bad kid screaming. Um, yeah. All right. It's fine. It's fine. I, it was popular. Okay. I just it was with it. popular. I just don't ever want to see it again. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're retiring. The thing is, we're, we're voting it on the best list, not the most popular list. So I think our list has been pretty fail proof so far, but that might have been. All right. Well, yeah. next up, we've got another video of a kid going crazy over video games. But thankfully, mm -hmm. it's just a child, really this happy. Is hilarious. He got exactly what he wanted for Christmas. This video. It's, I mean, it's truly spawned an internet celebrity. The kid from the clip, he's growing up now. Yeah. He's got his own website. He sold the actual gift that he <laughs> got on eBay. Before, right? Yeah, and now he's a star. He's on his own television commercial. Mm -hmm. take, take a look. <laughs> It's so good. It is really That's cute. That's how I felt when I went a little bit like Perez Hilton and I saw those Britney photos. I was like, oh, oh my God! Oh my God, Britney's the Oh my God! Yes! And then I, then I took a closer look. And, and then you were like, oh! 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 And then all the sex and relationship advice you need when we go in your pants. Now, before we go, we want to take a minute to say thanks to all the people who put the show together every single day. Yes, believe it or not, we don't actually do this thing by ourselves. But I thank mean, you, Kevin. Well, 95% of it, yeah. you and I. But the rest, sometimes, you know, people have to, the people need to get us coffee. Yeah, it's hot chocolate. My car needs to be right washed now. and waxed weekly. That's true. Oh, I need to wash my car today. Have someone do that for me. Yeah, why'd you now, say, when you, when you say you need, you just, Exactly. Done. Well, it makes me sound more humble. Okay. And I'm right. like, well, I need That's to go true. wash my car. Um, you guys, here are the deranged individuals who help bring you Attack of the Show. Where's my cheesecake? Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. things you guys saw today and more. Hey, this one, not so good. Yeah, not so much. Well, this one, cool. this next one was really interesting to me. I really wanted to see it because I'm into these trippy Richard Linklater kind of yes. deals. A Scanner Darkly. Scanner Darkly from the Philip K. Dick novel uh, directed by Richard Linklater starring Keanu Reeves. All done and in Downey, animation. Danny Downey, Downey Jr. In yeah, film. Robert Downey Jr. Um, if you didn't see this film in the theater, I mean, it is trippy. Of course, it involves uh, drug use and Keanu Reeves is an informant, but he's informing on himself. Is Keanu Reeves one using drugs while he's acting or is he... 
Okay. So uh, I, I don't know about that. But, but the thing is, a uh, lot of great extras on a commentary with Keanu Reeves. This is great that actors are now stepping in to do Whoa. commentary. And you would, I mean, you would really be impressed with how intelligent Keanu is. I would not have... Really? So it, for that? Oh, the guy who made, whoa, Yeah, his commentary is not like, buy a code, Fant Diaz, Downey Jr. Oh, my God, fantastic commentary. In fact, Philip K. Dick's daughter is also on the commentary, and a Philip K. Dick expert, along with Linklater. Great commentary, a lot of insight into the making said, of that You said film. the word dick more on this show than it's ever been said before. I could get, we're talking about Dick the author. Philip K. Mm. Dick. Philip K. Dick. My boy, what do you think? Is this a buy, a sell, a lease? Definitely a buy because the extras are fantastic. It's, it's watchable over and over again. And that style of animation is just, it's, it's, it's trippy. Cool. It's trippy and without drugs. You're just watching the DVD. Well, I'm into that, man. Cool. I need that. I need something to take the place of my old it's, habits. It's cheaper. Now, you it's always cheaper. bring a little something extra with you. What do you got for us today? Well, sometimes I bring good stuff, and sometimes I bring stuff to kind of warn you to watch out. This is Stan Lee's Mosaic, which is a cheap cartoon superhero that uh, the world can live without. And in the From Bad to Worse column, oh. we also have Stupid, Stupid man. man. And it's exactly what you think. It this. is. Stupid man. It says Superman oh. soar. Stupid man soars. Spelled S O R E S. Stupid man. It's if you a buy joke, this DVD, folks. you're a stupid man. Yeah. Thank Skip you, Chris. Both. You so, threw those. I did. I love you. Visit filmthreat.com or chrisgore.com cooler and discuss what movies will be worth seeing this year in the loop. And if that's not enough for you, you'll know what magazines are worth keeping and which ones are useful coasters. We're going to show you Olivia's rack. Finally, we are showing you the trailer for Reno 911 Miami. Now, the popular series comes to the big screen February 23rd, and we have your sneak peek. In a time of crisis... We have an infectious contamination in this building. Well, we got the entire Miami Beach police force in there. America will call... Do we have any police officers outside the confines of this building? Reno 911. People, let's roll! This February. Hi, don't hate, lady. Don't hate. Don't hate on me. Don't hate on me. Get ready for action so raw. Have we have received a noise complaint at the residence of someone named Shug Knight. Are you Shug? Are you Jay-Z? The music goes off right now. Ah, I love that. So unpredictable. Oh! Okay, what do we do? Uh, we should just go. Just... Rule number one for Gator. You gotta respect it. No! Oh, oh. Oh, that Gator did. It could only fit on the big screen. We gotta clear this beach. Okay, ready, people? On my count. One, two, three. Ah! 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 We got an officer now. Get a wet nap, people. Reno 911, Miami. You people, you have to start acting like this is a crisis. That was my bad. Awesome. Yeah, I like the gator when he comes out and eats it. Alcohol. And it is times like this that your family and friends gather around you and say, you have a problem. That I'm not going to stop drinking because Morgan Webb is not a quitter. So I've decided to shake myself out of this hangover with a look back at the worst camera angles of all time. We here at X-Play hate bad camera angles as much as you do. Where am I going? What am I shooting at? Who the hell just ate me? But these crappy camera angles aren't just limited to the Resident Evil franchise. Yes, in many games, it appears that the developers hired someone devoted to finding the absolute worst viewing angle for any situation. And, to their credit, whoever this person is, they've done an incredible job. Mr. Crappy-ass in-game camera designer, we salute you. Oh!
Morgan had to go very quickly. I think she's puking in the sphere. Luckily, my Leo 9 constitution means I never ever puke when I'm pulling over. Now, I may have lost control of my bladder last night, but we can't say that's because of alcohol for sure. Because that they get sent to the vice principal's office, right? They yeah. don't even, maybe they get, get detention. Detention. Oh, okay. Right yeah. on the board. In one high school, a kid caused so much trouble and was so annoying that they actually called the cops in to teach him a lesson. And there it is. Head off and boom! Wow. Yes! Yes! That Holy was so good! Crap. Officer, back to the face! And they push him. Look, he pushes his head well, forward. Well, it's a little at it. It's a little salt to the wound. Wow! See, that, 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 that's that's well, protect maybe, and serve. Thank you, Maybe next officer. time he'll get his homework in time or something. <laughs> right? I don't know. I Were you it. ever hit as a kid? My mom hit. She believed in corporal punishment. Really? She beat me a lot. See, it <laughs> seemed a little larger. Ripping a phone book in half. Yeah. You don't need to get all roided out, which would actually shrink your boys right. or work out 24-7. Nope. It seems anyone can possess the strength of Drago with the right technique. Here's an instructional video on how you do it. You pinch it and pull out the same time. Right? That seems really easy. It's, right? It you seems pinch really and pull. easy. Uh, just pinch to be and sure, though, we wanted to put it to the test. So mm -hmm. we've got some phone books. We managed to scrounge some yeah. out of some front porches here. And we've got some AOTS staff members whose arms have been uh, atrophied by years of pointing and clicking. They're ready yeah. to go. Yes. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> was An is Anthony's looking for a call service. He's yeah. still thumbing through it. No, Anthony's, get ready, yeah. buddy. All get right. the rage. And Let it build. Are you ready? Rip them! Rip Let's do this! He's methodical. He ripped off my time show at plasticbug.com. Having trouble with the cover, but that's okay. Okay. okay he's a dot company. Wait, look at Christian Harris. It's the biggest one. Oh, wow. Did you do it? Oh, he's pausing. He did like half of it, though. He's Come on, Christian. He's with the business section. He's good. Wow. He ate some for breakfast, though. Christian sits right next Christian, to me. Christian, help Scott out. As my Come dad. On. Help him out, would you? Okay, Christian, go down the line and rip them all. Anthony, just phone book somebody. Just smack him with it. Hey, I, Ed, Ed, Ed is in the red shirt, and I heard before that he could do it. Yeah, what's up, Ed? What happened? I got, I got you get your period wait, during the break? Oh, no. You got the rest of it. Mm, wow. Okay. Anthony, right, Anthony it. sits next to me, too, oh. and I'm embarrassed. Okay. He doesn't want to wrinkle his skirt. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to get this one going? Well, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Kevin, we, we can't I can't even tear it in half. Wait, let me try. Ugh. Go ahead. You got it. You got it. You can beat me in drinking. Might as well be able to rip it. Yeah, see? Whoa! Look at that! Yeah! Stuff st st my my huevos back. That's good. Yeah, they, they popped out a little bit. They, a little bit. They made a dinging sound. <laughs> like a dinner bell. They made of steel. Never uh, rusty. I think tomorrow we should try to lift up some cars or like do a caber toss. I would love like to do that. Like a world strongman kind of thing. I mean, we know how it ends, obviously. We'd be weeping in the corner. We said pillow fight. All right. Pillow fight. What are you doing? All right, everyone. Go to G4TV.com Friday. Do not miss children of men. In the year 2027, the world is plunged into chaos because women are no longer able to get pregnant and have children. But after 18 years of infertility, one woman miraculously gets pregnant and the race is on to bring her to safety and save mankind. It's a disturbing look at what a world of screaming of little brats and everybody's gone and it's really not a date movie. That's today's Attack This. Visit g4tv.com slash AOTS for links to all the stuff you just saw. Still ahead, if you want Wi-Fi on the go, we'll tell you who's going to be offering it in the feed. And up next, if you didn't get a TiVo for the holidays, don't worry. We'll have you covered when we deliver the punchline. Get ready for some laughs on TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. Letterman, he had quite a bit of venom. Take a look. This is kind of a bittersweet thing. I was going through my mail this morning. Yeah, this is it right here. Yeah, this made me kind of sad. Oh, what's that? Well, look at this. Ah. Yeah. Uh... That made me feel... Mm. Sweet. See what it says in there? What are you writing? Let's get together after the new year. <laughs> and, ju and just about now, Hitler's showing him around hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Just went for the jugular. I like right. that. I gotta ask you, if you were to be executed, what's your preferred execution style? Well, not for me, but I mean, in general, I think it'd be Pushkaki. What's Pushkaki? 
it's like the, the, the dog variety, really. Well, um, some might say that Conan is one of the funniest guys on network television. Absolutely. Not, not all TV, because that would be Thank Mr. You. Pereira. Thank but you. he's maybe at his best when something doesn't quite go right, and he's able to make fun of his own show. Yeah, watch this clip. He's trying to set up like this New Year's Eve flashback, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't quite get to his mark, which is the place he needs to be on time. Take a look. It was a terrific party, and man, it seemed like it just happened. I'm going to think a little bit about it. Oh. Mm. <laughs> the camera wasn't that wide at rehearsal. Ah, here's for you, sir. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. Yeah! <laughs> what a great New Year's Eve. Oh, there we go. What a great New Year's Eve party. <laughs> <laughs> if we could afford an editor, I'd edit this. What a great New Year's Eve party. Hey, you having fun there, Max? Oh, you bet, Conan. All right, that seemed real. <laughs> hey, and... Uh... Seriously, who hosts a TV show and then throws their crew under the bus when something know, doesn't like, work? <laughs> Audio yesterday. Um, did you know, oddly enough, uh, Conan invented The Simpsons? Which, I mean, that that's some credit right there. The man <laughs> invented a hell of a show. <laughs> Conan didn't invent the And he also invented SNL. SNL and The Simpsons, two great no, shows. No, Kevin. No gadget blog. Of course they cover new... Your gadget yeah. fix. Go, go, gadget fix. Along with us, of course. Absolutely. Gizmodo is first, and it's really the original gadget blog. Of course they cover new products and gadget rumors, and they've got a humorous voice and have really found their calling highlighting awesome do-it-yourself projects. For example, there's the PS2 toaster, or the clock that tells you the weather. Very cool stuff. But, uh, Zach, what is the latest from CES? Well, a lot of good stuff. One thing I thought was really cool was this new portable direct Ooh. TV television called the Sat Go. Uh, it's got a 17-inch LCD screen, you can see right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the size of a briefcase. A little big, but still pretty awesome. Now, do they know how much it is yet? Well, they don't tell you how much the unit actually is, but mm -hmm. the subscription is $4.99 a month, which comes on top of your current DirecTV subscription. Mm -hmm. So it just piles up there. Interesting. Now, if you want your gadget updates fresh and frequent, then Engadget should be your first stop. It's run by our good friend Pete Rojas, who actually used to work for Gizmodo. The Engadget voice is more straightforward and serious than Gizmodo, but they're always breaking great stories, and they provide the latest inside rumors from the tech world. Zach, uh, what are they looking at right now? Well, right now they got a, a lot of pictures on here and a hands-on report of a new MP3 player from SanDisk, which is called the Sansa Connect. Uh, they say it's got a nice bright screen and an easy to use interface. Looks pretty good right there. Yeah. Uh, it's got wireless sharing as well, which is kind of like the Zune. Hopefully it'll work a little better, you know? Hmm. And finally, for you Mac cultists, behold, T-U-A-W dot com, which stands for the unofficial Apple weblog. They uh, profile everything Mac from cool rumors like the uh, Mac tablet to stupid iPod add-ons, like the iPod baby stroller. Oh, why, I Lord, want that. why? Ugh. They will also feature interviews with top Mac guys like Jonathan Ives, and the, he's the designer of the iPod and the Mac, iMac. Excuse me, yeah. Zach, any cool Mac World stuff? Actually, with this gigantic world that'll make you want to unleash your inner Shackleton. Poor man Francis Drake. Yeah. And we'll finally, we'll learn about a disturbing new illness that's afflicting RPG players, and then we'll have representatives from Kaiser Permanente on hand to answer your questions. But we begin with a game from the Final Fantasy series, which is traditionally known for two things, characters of indeterminate sexuality and games that X-Play doesn't really like. But this one is different, except for the characters of indeterminate sexuality. It's Final Fantasy XII. You know what? I hate to admit it, but I sort of miss that music. Over the years, we've come to associate the words Final Fantasy with a lot of different things. Giant chickens. Androgyny. I know it. And terrible pop music. But we've never really felt like the actual games lived up to the hype. Well, we're happy to report that Final Fantasy XII is the real deal. The main character this time is Vaughn, a disturbingly girlish street urchin from the peaceful country of Dalmasca. Nice to meet you. When his homeland is attacked and the king is assassinated, 
Then have to team up and save the world with your usual assortment of good-looking rogues. I play the leading man. Who else? Seven. Rebellious princesses. Don't interrupt me. I'm thinking. And Icelandic playboy bunnies. Have you finished? For the record, that race of long-eared women is called Viera. Unlike other Final Fantasy games, this installment doesn't feature a snappy melodramatic love story. I like it better that way. Believe me, so do we. This is a story of high-minded political intrigue with really cool airship battles. <laughs> and don't worry, folks. We won't spoil any more of the games involving storylines. Wouldn't you rather see for yourself? Of course. If you haven't already noticed, Final Fantasy XII is freaking gorgeous. It is magnificent. The cutscenes are feature-filled quality, and the locales are rendered with an almost unheard-of level of detail. Every nook and cranny of the game is absolutely teeming with light. But like every great piece of art, Part 12 is no stranger to controversy. When fans found out that Square Enix replaced the turn-based battles with a combat system similar to those found in online RPGs like EverQuest, tasty-faced geeks everywhere went ballistic. Well, we have good news. The combat system in Part 12 blows away the fighting setup from every other Final Fantasy game. Trust us, once you get the hang of it, you will never want to go back. You're in good hands. As an added bonus, that means no more random encounters. You'll actually be able to see your enemies walking around the battlefield. If you want to fight them, run up and start whacking away. If not, you can keep on watching. It's that simple, people. Ready. Our only complaint is the overly complicated license system. Allow me to explain. You see, when you acquire a new item like a fancy shield, you can't simply use it right away. You'll first have to earn a license to use it using license points that you earn in battle. It's annoying. Yeah, no kidding. I'm sorry. Okay, that's it for the tactical mumbo jumbo. Like every Final Fantasy game, the outfits are more homoerotic than three seasons of water polo. Come on, what do you think? I think we need to get you a shirt. But some cheesy costumes aren't enough to keep us from finally falling in love with this fantasy. It's one of the best RPGs we've played in a long, long time. I thank you. No, thank you. Final Fantasy XII gets a five out of five. Speaking of androgynous characters, whatever happened to Grace Jones? You know, Steel? Their projections. Yes, and while this sounds great for Ken and Kaz, the key word in that sentence is ship. See, just because units are being shipped to stores, it doesn't mean anyone's, you know, actually buying them. There are reports all over the internet that PS3s are no longer the hot item they were a mere month ago. Now, a number of gaming blogs have posted photos that show stacks of PS3s on the Best Buy sales floor, untouched. Now, AOTS staff members have visited several stores in the Los Angeles area and have been told that, quote, no one wants the PS3 anymore, but I get asked every five minutes for the Wii, end quote. Blame away, fanboys, but if you don't believe us, you should go see for yourself. Next up, news regarding the Xbox 360. Our first game melds sexual perversion and classic Asian cinema into a cocktail both creepy and engaging. I don't really want to talk about it anymore, so here's our view of Giant Beauty. Monique, yeah. Nope, you're not looking at dead or alive extreme bikini lounger. On this edition of Weird Games, we're shining the spotlight on a game that's truly bizarre. The Dibe Gene, or in English, the Giant Beauty. The story begins like any other. A young bikini-clad woman strolling along the beach until she gets zapped by an evil alien. Uh, sand crab? <laughs> She passes out only to wake up and discover that she's grown into a giant. In other words, it's the Kirstie Alley story. Hey-o! Bingo! Okay, I'm really sorry. As a member of Japan's special forces, you have to take out this beautiful beast with a full fleet of copters, tanks, and jet fighters. In order to save the giant beauty from herself, you can't just blast away until she falls over. You have to shoot specific areas of her body, as indicated on your helpful diagram below. And believe me, no amount of Air Force training could prepare you to target these problem areas. Once you've ray gunned her booby area, you have to repeat the process on a... Well, you guessed it. 
Thank you, Japan, for taking something wholesome like giant monster movies and turning them into something that makes my pants tight. Once she arrives in Tokyo, the giant beauty goes all King Kong on the TMGO office building, a famous landmark in Japan. It's no Empire State Building, but it'll do. Use your Shrinko Ray to stop her before she reaches the top, all while doing battle with the Supreme Alien Overlord. If you defeat the Mother Brain, you treat her to the sweet finale. Uh, we assume this means it was all a dream in Japanese. Or was it? Hello. The controls aren't exactly spot on. Your helicopter, for example, moves slower than Paris Hilton in a fourth grade math class, which leads to quite a few boobon collisions. So, let's play a round of Sexy Metropolis destroying mutant Japanese monster, or not, with some of our favorite creatures. Godzilla! Ghidorah! King Kong! Aztec Monster Guy! Um, Robot Monkey King! The Giant Beauty is actually part of a budget series of games in Japan. So, if your kink is shooting at 150-foot women, it shouldn't cost too much to import this mail-order bride. But then I saw the last 20 movies he was in. Anyway, enough about Canadian people. Let's get back to Americans. Gold medal winning Puerto Rican Americans like Johnny Mosley. Nothing says winter like skiing. And by skiing, we don't just mean a sport. We mean a lifestyle. Very odd and disturbing lifestyle, but... Let's let Johnny himself show you in Johnny Mosley's Mad Tricks. This week on Weird Games, we're going to take a different look into the oddity that only extreme sports and having a really bad agent can cause. There's nothing weird in the gameplay of Johnny Mosley Mad Tricks. Notice the trademark. It's your basic mix of skiing, jumping, and tricks. However, the game has an intro movie that can only be described as House Party meets Extreme Off. I said too much already. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the weirdness. Okay, this is fine. Starts off with extreme skiing, with some extreme film grain, nothing wrong with... Oh, wait, now he's at a party and he has a sleeveless friend. Back to the extreme. More party. Wait, did, did someone try to pepper spray Johnny? Rewind that. Let me see, his supermodel slash bodyguards just kicked some guy out of the party for taking a picture of Johnny with a camera phone. Uh, Johnny, seeing as your celebrity is somewhere between Carrie Strug and Jim Craig, you should let him take the photo. Continue. More skiing. All right, it's not a party until some jackass starts breakdancing. We got for that helicopter, Johnny. Now that's better. Let the people take a picture, Johnny. Or stream. Or sleeveless dancing, extreme. Johnny, can you sign these? Oh, yeah. Pause. First of all, does anyone at this party have a shirt with sleeves? Second, was this boob flashing scene added just so Johnny could assert his manliness? Because if you're trying to be tough, you might want to lose the head wrap. Continue. Ooh, more mad tricks. Now, it appears that Johnny's leaving the party, and he's left his dangerous 90-pound models to guard the stairs. That was fun, but I'm over it already. I kind of want to go skiing. All right, late. What if it snowed in San Francisco? Well, what, what? What if it snowed in San Francisco? Wait, wait, is this actually what you think about? Are, are, are you stoned? Yeah. Next. Who is this guy, and why is he just following you with a camera? And Johnny, what are you grabbing at? Anyway, virtual Johnny starts skiing all over his snow-covered San Francisco. But I think we can all learn some valuable lessons from this intro. Lesson one, don't take pictures of Johnny Mosley. Lesson two, wear sleeves. Lesson three, don't leave a party full of girls to ask your sleeveless male friends theoretical questions about impossible weather conditions. What if it snowed in San Francisco? I hope everyone learned something today and that Johnny Mosley will win gold again so he can make more weird intros to his bland skiing games. Bring comfort in the bottle. And you may have noticed celebrity nerd-ass Blair Butler there in an early film role. 
Blair was actually nominated for Daytime Emmy Award for that role, but was later disqualified when they realized we're barely a television show. And as we head out to break, here is the birth of one of our most annoying characters, Screaming Intern. This is something from us to you. It's one of our very own interns. Isn't he gorgeous? He's from a West Coast vocational and technical school. Now, you may remember him as our screaming intern. <gasps> I know. So, I was dating this girl, right? Her name is Zelda. So, she got kidnapped, and then she got turned to stone, and I was cell shaded, and I was like seven. Did I tell you about Zelda, my girlfriend? Up next, our first glimpse of Morgan Von Vebb. Please, please welcome eternally respawning co-hosts Morgan Webb and Adam 2.0. Welcome back to X-Play. I'm Adam 2.0, a younger, hipper version of Adam Sessler. You know, you really do look like him. Thanks. I was clothed in his image with a few modest improvements. I have a USB port. You want to know where it is? Ew. What? You can stick a dongle in it. Ew. See? That's exactly how you would have responded if the original Adam had said that. Damn, you're right. And I can introduce segments just like the first Adam Sessler. Here's a review of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Welcome back to X-Play. Today is a theme episode, and we're sorry. But we're looking back at the very first appearance of some of our most beloved characters. Next up, the only character on X-Play with... the most amazing Japanese watches that money can buy. For just a few thousand yen, you can deck your wrist in Japanese splendor. Our favorite is this colorful, binary-looking watch that looks like something Flash Gordon would wear. For about $100, this thing is super geek cred that you can wear on your wrist. Plus, there's the added value that no normal person will be able to figure out what time it is just by looking at it. Next, smoking will kill you, and even Rod and Todd know that smokers are jokers. But if you're gonna smoke, you might as well do it like Wonder Woman. And we don't mean French inhaling while wearing spandex. We're talking invisible people. These tobacco rolling papers from... <laughs> All right, maybe, maybe not. Next up, Starlog, that wonderful sci-fi slash fantasy movie magazine, scores an onset report of the film Children of Men, which I haven't seen. I really want to see. I really want to see that. Now, the critics and audiences have been stunned by the realistic violence and visual effects of the movie. Many people are wondering how director Alfonso Cuaron achieves this using long takes. Well, this article spills some of the secrets. For example, the director used digital cuts to make four shots look like one long one. Mm -hmm. And Clive Owen, who spends most of the movie barefoot, wore invisible, high-tech prosthetic <laughs> soles on his feet that, that were even heated to compensate for the cold weather. I mean, that's cool stuff. Pansy. What? A little frostbite going to kill you on the set. But it might help you get into character. But, oh, well, maybe. That's a good point. I was the guy who was on. at the block stuffing four of those feet warmers into my snow boots, <laughs> and I was only on the mountain for like, like three the, minutes. You're shaking them up. You're like, I was so pissed. Support. I'm like, this is cold and really miserable. I don't want to uh, snowboard right now. Yeah. That's how I was. Yeah. I was so, like just holding on my Do you see this? Chocolate. Like the explosions going off. It's like a spill from the movie. The explosions all going off, and he's wor more worried about spilling his coffee cup. He is. He's oh, God. Enough. The world's ending. You can't lose my latte. Hey, it's hard to get a latte. Those lines at Starbucks are long. Mm -hmm. Finally, it's Predator Extreme. This is a magazine oh, for yeah. only the hard... Thank you. The only hardcore <laughs> hunters. It, like, literally comes up inside you. Oh, it, it actually goes... It, it recedes. Yeah, your, your actually butt cheeks go inside okay. and back around. So that's like a... Is that a 9 on the... Mm, probably like a 15 on a scale of 10. Wow. Look, I'm just saying I want to throw that out there. That's my rack, everyone. Oh, no, 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 it's not. There's, there's one more. I, forget, uh, I don't know if you uh, have heard of this magazine uh, here. <laughs> Amazing articles. We all know it. This is the old, uh, the old Playboy. Yeah, you... I finally, I did, I did, I did Playboy. Yes, you did. Yes. And I saw the shots that didn't make it. Hello. Huh. Wow. Yeah, there, Let there. the eagle soar. <laughs> um, but no, this one. Look at that. I, I like that. Yeah. You're playing coy with the reader there. I am. What are you thinking when they're doing this? How uh, cold was the shoot? I was thinking, I'm wearing a thong. Yeah. I was like walking out, but thankfully, uh, um, the hair and makeup were gay people, and it was a female photographer. <laughs> yeah, okay. so I was like, I just, I felt comfortable. So it was a standard shoot, is what you're saying. It was a standard shoot, yeah. I felt comfortable, and I loved it. It was fun. Mm. It was cool to do Playboy. It's a great honor. Well done. Will you ever, uh, like, do Playboy? No. 
Really? No, my legs stay closed for that one. Oh. No, but how much are you offering? Uh, give it five, ten years. Five, I mean, years. thousand. Never mind. Okay, great. Check out G4TV.com. I had a lot of fun with that E3. I hope it's good. All right, and finally, in an interview with Game Informer magazine, Valve's founder and managing director, Gabe Newell, let everyone know exactly how he feels about the PlayStation 3 by calling the console, quote, a total disaster. Newell and Valve are behind the immensely popular Half-Life series, which is coming to consoles in the near future. Also in the interview, Gabe continues his rant by suggesting that Sony cancel the PS3 altogether and start all over again with another product. Sort of a, oops, our bad. Uh, their best plan, uh, he said, would be pretty much a do-over. Very harsh words, right? Well, despite Gabe's smackdown, Valve still plans to release Half-Life 2 Orange for the old PlayStation 3 later this year. It's going to include Half-Life 2, uh, the two expansion episodes, Team Fortress 2, and Portal. The 360 is also getting a similar release as well, and it's going to cost you $59.99. And now we just have to sit back and wait to see who has the best version. But uh, my money's on the 360 from what Gabe had to say. That wraps up today's simulator that uses images from Google Maps to draw the landscape. Pick your destination from 22 different locations, including cool places like Disneyland, New York City, Paris, and the surface of the moon. It's pointless fun, and there's no winning or losing, but trust us that it's still lots of fun to play. There's the added danger of crashing your plane, and you can spice things up by shooting bullets with the space bar. Next up, Winter Bells. Our leaderboards in Jeopardy! With about a thousand exclamation points. Website member Shawnee326902 writes, quote, If anyone cares about the leaderboards in Gears of War, you should read this. I noticed about a month ago a person in Warzone that had 50,000 points and had only played one match. Now, today, I wake up to find myself down 10 places from the night before. Mind you, I was ranked 50th all the time. This needs to be dealt with at an extreme pace. Whoa, an extreme pace. All right, let's, uh, let's get this sorted out then. Okay, leaderboards, they're cool. Share for about the first five minutes after a game comes out. After that, we know the top spots are permanently taken over by hackers and unemployed guys and college kids pulling bong rips when they should be in pan-african studies now gears of war it's a great game multiplayer is fantastic but maybe just maybe you need to switch your priorities buddy come on shawnee focus on something other than stats like try a social life and a girlfriend or get a subscription to a popular men's magazine or a combination of the three don't worry about those leaderboards my friend because look at this you're on my top five great job buddy you're right there you're on my leaderboard right between peanut butter and banana sandwiches and false idol worship. Congrats. Tell your friends. Finally, it's time I responded to another fanboy accusation which has been posted online. This, this gets to me. It's in the forum thread. Quote, yes, Kevin, you're definitely not a Sony fanboy. Our old buddy Triple X Play posted, quote, because you're a Nintendo fanboy. Colon parentheses, which I think is a smiley face. It's a net thing. Look, Triple X Play is referring to past allegations that I somehow favor Sony over other game console manufacturers and, and now he's trying to say that I've switched sides and I'm in love with Nintendo. Of course, all these rumors were fueled by that, that infamous tape that, that leaked online. I'm glad they know about us. It's all right. We've been in bed for too long. Let them, let them be proud. It doesn't matter. No forum. Just you and I. You and I. I love these, oh, these little dual shots. Look at these. Just rub those all night, you silly little bitch. All right. I got a show to do, so uh, there's some orange juice on the counter. Look, I've made some mistakes. I'm not proud, but I assure you that things haven't gotten serious, well, too serious within the next-gen consoles yet. I mean, I haven't committed. You know, I'm the time with the Husky PS3, and I know it's the PS3. It's the little meat on the bones, a little Husky. I know, I know what they say. You know, PS3s are like mopeds, fun to ride, but you don't want your friends to see you doing it. All right, well, what about the Xbox 360? You know, we've been hanging out for over a year now, but, you know, I don't think I can settle down with, with a console who's online with that many dudes every night. You know, and I'm sure it's the, the settling-down type. But of course, I can't ignore the Wii either. You know, it's cute, petite. But I gotta admit, after playing it for a while, I feel kind of dirty. But more than anything, just to make it clear, I'm an equal opportunity gamer. I love all the consoles. Hey guys, I was wondering what you thought about the Columbine game being banned from Slam Dance. Do you think it was fair for the game developers after the game was announced to be a finalist and lost all their sponsorships? Ooh. No! That's, well, that's a great question. No, Kevin has absolutely answers, not. But for those of you who don't know this, this controversial title was a finalist in the Slam Dance Independent Video Game Festival, mm -hmm. and then the judges pulled it out. They said it was because they feared a lawsuit. Weak. Now, since then, other developers have withdrawn in protest. The festival lost funding, but who's right? You it's a Columbine video game. Yes, but it doesn't. The thing is, it shouldn't matter. I don't care if it's like Super Train Molester 2007, which mm -hmm. I maintain would be a huge hit on the Nintendo <laughs> Wii. 
if you released. Right here. It doesn't matter what the game is or how crass it is or what the subject matter is. You don't censor things. You just yeah. it's not it's not right, especially when it's something that could be considered art in any way, shape, or form. Because the guy got all the way to the finals. Yeah. I mean, obviously it was good enough to get to the There's finals. There's obviously some then... redeeming value in whatever this project now, is or this game. Now is. tell me this. We talked about this earlier, and when I found out that the guy, the kid, was 24 years mm -hmm. old when he did this, I actually didn't. I thought didn't wasn't as pissed off as I might have been if it was like a. 40 or 50 year old trying right. to cash in and this It'd have been it. different if it was like a Vince Desi, the guy who makes the postal games trying mm -hmm. to cash in on a tragedy, but yeah. this guy was releasing the game for free. It was sort of a labor of love in his spare yeah. time. But yeah, anytime you pull something, anytime you do anything, it's a wrong move, no matter what. Yeah. If, if history hasn't taught us that yet, I don't know when we're actually going to ever learn. Well, that's your point, but we want to know what you guys at home think, and it is time for the poll question. Should Columbine Massacre RPG have been pulled from Slam Dance? Vote at our website, g4tv.com slash AOTS, or text your vote to G4TXT, that's 44898, to vote and register for AOTS Live News Alert. All right, and congrats to those who stood in line and managed to score a Wii this weekend. Yes, you said it should not have been pulled. Let's go over to Kevin, who is actually working on an RPG about his own life. Yeah, I am. It's uh, all adventure, zero action. Once again, folks, Columbine is in the press, but this time it's actually because of a video game based on the shocking events. Now, Super Columbine Massacre RPG, yes, that's the name, recreates the incident and puts you in the shoes of the gunman. Now, with all the controversy at Slam Dance, many people are saying that a line needs to be drawn. So here's the rundown on the story that is bringing the issue of video game censorship to the forefront. Super Columbine RPG recreates the morning of April 20th, 1999, and asks players to relive that day through the eyes of Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, the two responsible for the deadliest school shooting in American history. The game was a finalist in the Slam Dance Guerrilla Game Maker competition until the festival's president, Peter Baxter, pulled the game from the competition to avoid potential lawsuits. Slam Dance says, quote, there are moral obligations to consider with this particular game and the preservation of the Slam Dance organization and its whole community, end quote. Now, almost half the competition's 14 finalists have withdrawn their entries. They call Slam Dance's move an insult to their medium. How real is too real? Is Slam Dance's position justified? And why are video games held to a higher standard than that of their film counterparts at the same festival? Decide for yourself, folks. It's the loop. Joining us via satellite tonight from Park City, Utah, home of the Sundance and Slam Dance Film Festivals, the creator of Super Columbine Massacre RPG, Danny Ladoni. And from Denver, gaming writer and Rocky Mountain News, or for Rocky Mountain News and editor for Kotaku.com, Brian Kashente is back for more. Welcome, gentlemen, to The Loop. Hi. Danny, I'd like to start with you, sir. Thanks for I, having me. I, I, it's a pleasure to have you here. I've been doing all the research. I read the artist statement on your website, and I'm not entirely sure I buy it. In fact, some people have called you disingenuous at best. So please do me and everybody else at home the favor. Take us back to the day you discovered RPG Maker. What went through your head when you decided to make this game? Like, wh why, why make a game based on Columbine? When I discovered RPG Maker, it occurred to me that I could spend the next six months working on a game. And I asked myself, if I could make a game about anything I wanted to, what would I want to make a game about? And honestly, because I was a high school student in Colorado at the time that Columbine occurred, it's an issue that never went away in my mind. And I knew that I wanted to make a game that mattered, something that was personally important. I had no idea if anyone else would ever play it, but I knew that this was something that I wanted to explore for me and for my understanding of what really happened. All right, and you sat down, you toiled away, you did extensive research, which I have to give you, give you kudos for there. And six months later, you came out with this game. And Brian, I know you've been following the story very closely. You've played the game. Right. What do you think of Danny's game? I, yeah, I think that it's uh, an interesting concept. I think what he was trying to do is genuine. I just think that perhaps the message might get lost in the medium. Uh, part of the problem is it's a, a game that's, you know, it's an RPG, so it's got you doing a lot of actions over and over again. And, and the message that he's trying to deliver is sort of stuck within these hours of gameplay. So, Danny, how do you feel about that? Do you think that the media might have actually gotten in the way of the message here, that people see a video game based on the events they see shooting in a cafeteria and they don't bother to figure out why you decided to put this on a computer screen? I think the message is absolutely lost in the medium because we understand often that games are children's toys. The average gamer is 33 years old, but most people don't know this. 
And so the idea that you could take a video game and address a real serious issue in our culture is still a very new one, and one that a lot of people aren't prepared to accept on face value. Sure. And it's one thing to address an issue with the game, but this, this particular title has raised several issues. And, and Brian, Slamdance and even Sundance, they have films that, that tackle sort of equally controversial topics, yet in 13 or 12 years, there's been zero censorship of any of these films pulling the game out of fear of a lawsuit. I mean, are they justified, Brian? Do you, do you think that was the right move? No, you know, I, I think it would be justified if they decided to never enter the game. But once the game's entered, and, and not only entered, but actually becomes a finalist, why wait till just before the final selection to choose a winner to actually say, no, we've now decided the game isn't worthy? You know, the game hasn't changed. What's changed is the, the controversy, I guess. Danny, were you surprised at all when you found out that your game was pulled? What was your reaction? Well, honestly, while I may have been surprised that the game was pulled, I was more surprised that they asked me to submit it to begin with. Because quite honestly, for them to say, we want your game in the competition, please submit it, was almost a way of, of really taking on a lot of courage. Because this game has a proven paper trail of being very divisive and controversial. So it really is a double-edged sword in that light. I just wish that Slamdance would have been able to stand up for their convictions and stand behind a game that they saw having a lot of merit for the game-making community. Sure. And Brian, what do you think? Is this a case of slam dance not standing up? Or uh, do you think they would like to have the game in the finalists? They just really can't afford the lawsuit, and that's why they're backing down? You know, it, it's hard to say. I spoke with Peter Baxter uh, right after the announcement was made, and um, I spoke with him probably for 30 or 40 minutes, and 90% and of that phone call was me trying to get him to answer that question, or, or right. answer the question, why? And um, they're just not answering yeah, it? Hey, they're Brian, reluctant to you answer? Know, I've actually talked to Peter about this in the last couple of days. We've done a lot of talking. Myself, Peter Baxter, Game Festival Director Sam Roberts. And what's clear to me now is that Slamdance simply doesn't have the resources, financially and otherwise, to spearhead this battle that really needs to be waged on the front of games to be able to handle these issues. Sure. And it's unfortunate because Slamdance really sets itself up to be that advocate. But in this case, I think the, the scale of this confrontation between politics, video games, the legal system is a bit bigger than one festival to accommodate. Right. And well, the festival aside, Danny, there's another issue here, and that's, you know, as video gamers, I'm sure yourself, Brian, and myself here, we, we know that video games perhaps aren't the root uh, of the cause of a lot of violence. There's many other factors and many other issues at play. But I do have to bring up, last year there was a school shooting at Dawson College. Uh, and, and you're very, very well aware of this case because, you know, 19 people were injured, one person was killed, and the shooter said on his own blog, his personal blog, that your game was one of his favorites. And by no means am I implying that you're in any way responsible, but I do have to ask, do, do you feel that in addition to raising questions about events like Columbine, that you might have maybe glorified them by making a game about it or perhaps even desensitized you know, the shooter in this case to these type, type of events? Right. I think if you're looking for a murder simulator, mine is not really the game to pick up for that reason. The game is laced with a lot of literary references. It's a role-playing game where the player encounters a lot of facts about the case. I feel it's very unfortunate that Kim Veer Gill did what he did in Dawson College, but of course we need to recognize that video games are not the cause of this kind of behavior. In fact, my game was made as a response to the idea that video games should be demonized or vilified as scapegoats, for the kinds of things that go on in our culture today. All right, well, I want to thank you, both Danny and Brian, for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you guys keeping us in the loop. Listen, the controversy over violence in video games has raged since the Pac-Man days, really, but at what point will the same freedom of expression that all other creative mediums share be given to video games? You know, the Columbine game, it may not win any awards at Slam Dance, but what it has done is push the envelope further regarding the definition of what a video game is or what it can be. And I applaud Danny for that. Right now, though, we got to go over to my pick for best of fest, Miss Olivia Munn. With luck, the board of Nintendo will already be emotionally prepared for it. And Nintendo DS, know this. We will always love you. Just be careful. Before you let someone slip a stylus in you, get tested. Ew.
You play Colosseum with me? On the field of honor, the gods bearing witness to my glory, I will pull your entrails through your eyes and use them as reins to ride your damned soul to Hades below! Dude. The Grim, we've moved a couple of hundred miles south over the past three and a half years, but we still got our San Francisco memories. Here, take a look. Welcome to Dex Land! other level. This is like a real TV show with a full production crew. But you're not the floor director, you're that ninja. During that review, my co-host hit me in the head with a tire iron, blaming her actions on Barbie Horse Adventure for the Game Boy Advance. Is that a dreidel? Yes, I made it out of clay. They didn't tell you they hired me for the new show? No, why'd they do that? There was a meeting. Morgan, uh, do you really play video games? Oh, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was too busy leveling up on Golden Sun on my Game Boy. Hey there, you big bitch. What? Hey there, you f***ing dog. Hey, how are my two favorite c***ers doing? Plug. Who wrote that into the show? Anyway, it's time to get serious, you guys. Like Sophie's Toy Serious. Like Def Leppard's drummer losing his arm serious. So do games make people more violent? Or am I just hurting Adam? Because I can. What's the matter, Adam? I can't get past this boss, this fireman! Isn't that the first boss? Shot! Good cocoa, isn't it? I wouldn't know. I switched to gin five minutes ago. <laughs> Want to know what no one ever tells you about San Francisco? It's really, really good rice aroni. Like, I don't know if it's fresher or what, but the stuff is good. Also, in a city with that many tech geeks, we only seem moderately dorky. Ooh, and sourdough bread. <laughs> Other than that, we miss nothing because parking there sucks hardcore. On the X Play Board. You better like my game! On the X Play Board. It's my closest thing to fame. On the X Play Board. I don't want to hear it. On the X Play Board. Don't even take me near it. I'm my favorite character you couldn't understand. Solid states a roadmap on my way to be a man. RPGs and hockey games, volleyball and cricket. If Webb and Seth don't get it, then they can, can suck it. Hi. It's our 500th episode of the TV show. X Play, it's called. You know, you think after 500 episodes of a show this witty, engaging, and pretty damn smart, we'd have been plucked from obscurity and be placed in respectable jobs. Like doing sideline weather during NFL weekend games. Or hosting cheaters. But no. No, we're still here, cranking out television for you, our only real friend. So to remind us that nostalgia really means the pain of remembering, let's look at the classic X-Play moments we've shared with you so far. Mommy! Hey, what the hell are you doing? Give me back my Game Boy. For the past 15 minutes, I've had Jason's big click coming out my left ear and super Italian stereotype brothers coming out my right. Give me back my Game Boy. Are you going to put it away? I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to with it. Then I'm afraid I'm going to have to take it. Just go get the car. Adding on with a fragger for you? You fragged me in a dream, you better wake up and apologize. So if I decide to go with your wireless plan, uh, what are some of the benefits? Power. Unlimited power! <laughs> <laughs> minutes, minutes. Unlimited minutes. Uh, hello? Oh. Now these were a promotional item for the Nintendo DS, and what they are so... And you could emulate it clapping with them. You know, if you're excited about something and you want to show your applause. Oh my goodness, our model seems to be having a little bit more fun with that than the intended. Apparently they also lift and separate. And that's all the products we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching the Home Schwag Network. Can we get her some help? Hey, haven't I seen you on television? You seek knowledge? Enlightenment. Salvation. 
Yeah, a few million buried Atari cartridges. Ah, sounds like you might want a word with Mr. Spender. He used to work for Atari. Where can we find this Mr. Spender? Mr. Spender lives right out there in one of those little white houses. Which one? And today's Tuesday. Should be on the third one from the left. Okay. okay. Thank Thanks. you. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you. I'll see you again real soon. Real soon. Get away from her, you bitch! That's not even a line from Star Wars. Nerd! Look out! to the world we've made it kind of we're on tv and we play games for a living and that a bunch of sketches about groin injuries of hunter s thompson is what we have to leave next charge up all your digital devices with one of the cleanest and most abundant sources of energy ever solar power the global solar sunlink is a fold-up array of solar panels that comes with an outlet for standard plugs or you can buy additional accessories that will charge your ipod and cell phone You'll probably be the most popular geek at any outdoor event like Burning Man, where charging your geek toys is less than convenient. And finally, upgrade that crappy 20-inch TV with a brand new 32-inch widescreen LCD HD. We're going to get right into it. Let's yeah. do it. Make sure you have your hair questions ready. We're going around the net. <laughs> That's right. Sean Stevens and Peter Berdowski were charged. Terror! They were charged and arraigned by Boston courts this morning, all because of the panic. The media was awaiting for them outside the courthouse, expecting a statement. Uh, would the two throw Turner Broadcasting under the bus? I thought they might. Or mm. would they rail against the city of Boston and fight the charges leveled against them? Oh, I hope it's the second one. Well, thankfully, they're treating the situation with as much tact and respect as uh, some believe it truly deserves. But altogether, I want to redirect this onto the topic of haircuts in the 70s because I want to educate myself about it a little bit more than I know Correct. already. So we and it's uh, like. Uh, we see their appearance. What other the haircuts uh, are there? Prosecutors. Oh, there's the, 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 the 60s. Uh, they, right, 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 right. Yeah, I really like the one where the, the hair sort of curls around the top. Oh, yeah, this is so hot. taking the case so very seriously. Yeah. What was it like to spend last night in jail? That's not a hair question. I'm sorry. What do you just want to apologize? That's also not a hair question. Uh, that's not a hair question. Wait, and, you know, and people are giving them question. so much crap over this. I... First up, of course, we have to have one of the Ignignoct LED advertising devices. Yeah, that's right. One of the authentic Aqua Teen Hunger Force circuit boards that were placed around the city of Boston. It prompted the arrest of two people and numerous public apologies from Ted Turner's TV empire. Now, this particular one was removed from Commonwealth Avenue in Boston, and uh -huh. sorry, it's not actually a bomb. Oh, no, but you could probably use it to outrage morons or cripple a large metropolitan area, you know, for a day, piss off commuters, whatever you want to do, you know. They'll sit in traffic for hours while the bomb squad God, detonated. It's, it's, it's great. It's really good. And it's quite a steal at just over $5,200 uh -huh. How with many bids 42 so far? bids. 42 bids. I woke, the, the first thing I did yesterday when I heard about the story is let's find out where they are in L.A. because I wanted one. Not because I, now, now I might actually but bid on one But can't you just go eBay. buy like a regular one and say, No, you know, it's got to be a legit one. It's got to be that one. has to be legit. Has to be that. What would you do with it? I'd put it in my bathroom. Or over on the floor. If I had a pool table, I'd put it over there. Or put it on the 405. Do your own thing with it. Just keep it circulating. Clear out traffic for myself. If you watched our program last night, our guest was Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates, and I don't know if you noticed, but he left in a bit of a hurry. Take, take, take a look at the footage. Bill Gates, Windows Vista on sale. Oh, he's leaving! He can't just leave! And what's interesting is, that is the cleaned up version that we did for television. Here is what actually happened in the studio. Thank you so much for joining hey, us. We really do appreciate it. Bill Gates, Windows Vista on sale. Stop, Jesus. But who does it? He was a really nice guy, really good at turning things into wine, and he had loads of fun stories about how faith is like a mustard seed. But America loves a particular kind of Jesus. A rock and roll, hating, gun-toting, Mary Cheney criticizing Jesus who takes no prisoners. Like if Steven Seagal were the son of God instead of being the Dalai Lama's boyfriend. For a complex exploration of evangelical theology, here's our review of Left Behind. Tell me over and over and over again, my gaming friends, you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction? 
When the rapture comes, will you be ready? Will I be ready? Will any of us be ready? The apocalypse is here. You don't want to be left behind. Based on the book series, which is based on irrefutable facts from one of those testament thingies, Left Behind Eternal Forces is not only a game. It's a recruitment drive. A recruitment drive for the believers. I don't mean that Martin Sheen movie from 87. I mean real believers. Your mission, nay, your divine right in this prophecy is to save as many souls as possible. They may not even know they need saving, but really, who does? Just walk up to any person, rudely intrude on their lies, and show them the way. Sounds good. Once you have them in your thralls, they can work for you by building. Build a bank first to acquire more money. Crosswalking. Rocking. Let's rock the house. Rolling. Let's sing to the Lord. Praying. Praise the Lord. Rioting. Okay, we'll do it. That sort of thing. If you're a left-behind zealot, and we mean that in a good way, then there's nothing more riveting, more rewarding, more Jesus-esque than accosting some undeserving devil worshiper and showing him the light. I will go. The wonderful, Rock glorious light. Lord. And if they do see the way, nifty sweater vest for all. The sweater vest, the big man's favorite clothing accessory. If they don't see the way, then hell awaits, my friends. Hell awaits. <laughs> The game takes place in the somewhat abandoned streets of New York City, a city awash in sin and depravity. And Jews. I have other plans on Sunday. Gee, thanks, Left Behind. Hasn't this city suffered enough? Someday a real rain will come and wash all this scum off the street. But until then, we'll just have to settle for Left Behind. Speaking of sin, is that the Laugh Factory? You can talk, you can talk, you can talk. You're brave now, fellow flockers. Throw his ass out. He's a heathen. He's a heathen. He's a heathen. I wonder if this guy was left behind. Which leads us here at X-Play to wonder, which of us would be left behind? Take out the religious aspect here, and this just isn't a good RTS. The camera work is terrible. It's hard to know what's going on. Everybody looks alike, and quite simply, walking up to people and asking them to change their lives just doesn't make for a compelling game. I guess we're all going to be left behind for that one. Two heathens out of five. God help us all. Said it before, say it again. You gotta pray just to make it today. Actual game, Colts or Bears? Come on, Jimmy. I would bet my life on this team, babe. Now, according to my research... You son of a bitch! Oh, my God! Jim! Oh! Jimmy! Yeah. J Jimmy! Oh, great. Oh, that's... my God, are you... Oh, that Wait. sucks. Jimmy! Jimmy, what, ha what happened? Oh, well, what the hell do you think just happened, babe? I just got shot in the gut. And uh, now it looks like the geeker is a, uh, a goner. And don't worry, Jimmy. Hold on there. We've got people in the studio calling the paramedics right now. We're going to get you safe, Jimmy. I promise. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm not seeing the light and all, all that stuff. Jimmy, hold. Jimmy, you got to hold on for me, man. you got to hold hey, on. Uh, Olivia, b before I go, and, uh, one last thing. Yes, Jimmy, anything you need. I'm right here. What? Will, will you show me your rack there, babe? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that's oh, bears, my bears by seven. <laughs> it was bound to happen, really. Well, we'll find out this Sunday if Jimmy was right. Let's go over to Kevin right now, who better have learned a lesson from this last incident. Why don't you guys uh, take a break while I uh, sort out some very conflicted feelings? Today and more, go to g4tv.com slash AOTS. All right, here's the deal. X-Play, it's a show about video games. It's coming up next. And it's coming up next. I feel like Thomas Edison after he cured polio. I'm on fire, baby. I'm fearless, and I'm fearless, baby. And I got the bankroll to prove it.
off me. Welcome to Craig's Survival Chip for the Woods. If you're stuck out in the woods, you just have to remember one word. Survive. If you're gonna survive out in the wild, you've gotta find something to eat. Now, some bark you can actually get nutrition from. This is one of them. And what you're gonna wanna do is just get some of the barks off like this with your knife. Hopefully you have a better knife than this. Okay, I've cut myself. What's your, if you... Huh? Let me clean it out. I can't say that. Stop it's acting burning. like a... Stop it! The water is oh, too hot. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Now you're burning it I'm with the water. I'm cleaning it! Okay. That okay. is what I'm talking about. Over at Amazon.com, they've got super cheap 1 gig and 2 gig data traveler USB thumb drives from Kingston. The 1 gig drive is only $9 and the 2 gigger runs for $25. We can't think of a cheaper way to tote our favorite MP3s, ebooks and let's just face it porno. That's in a far more gender equitable place than in the canonical films. See, well no one's questioning that Princess Leia could have if she needed to brought down the empire single-handedly. The portrayals of Padme, Anakin's mother and Everyone else with two X chromosomes, kind of a lot less dynamic. But the extended universe has been giving us frogs who were Jedis for years. And if not Jedi, at least that stallion young Twi'leks, like the protagonist of Star Wars, Lethal Alliance. The space between the Star Wars trilogies, the final marketing frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship LucasArts. It's continuing mission to explore familiar old worlds, to seek out new life, an existing gameplay template to boldly sell us what has already been sold before. Star Wars Lethal Alliance is the first shot fired in what will undoubtedly be a long campaign of Star Wars stories taking place between episodes three and four. Or as I like to call it, the Tweenagy era. You play a bounty hunter and freelance thief, Rihanna Saren, recruited by Kyle Katarn of Jedi Knight fame to steal stuff from the Empire. Rihanna Saren. That's right. I have heard a lot about you. It's all true, every bit of it. Rihanna packs a mean blaster pistol, silky smooth animation, and a convenient auto lock ability. Removing the need to aim makes control fairly simple and leaves you free to use Rihanna's acrobatic abilities to run rings around your enemies. Get close enough and she'll whip out an energy sword called the Thorn of Ryloth for some cool melee action. Very early on, you'll meet up with Zeo, a small droid who quickly proves his value. Maybe you can tag along for a little while. With Zio's help, Rihanna can perform almost superhuman feats of acrobatic skill, flipping her way through numerous jumping puzzles with ease. Zio can also knock enemies down from a distance, be used as a shield, help you through Matrix-style dodge maneuvers, and stick to certain walls and ceilings. Thanks, Zio. There are occasional frustrations with the targeting system, mainly trying to switch between Zio and enemies in a timely manner. The lack of camera control is annoying, but not crippling. Still, here's yet another game that leaves us wondering why the hell the PSP does not have a second analog nub on it. Lethal Alliance's greatest flaw is its short length and lack of replay value. The game's 34 levels span numerous planets and environments, but they're all fairly simple mazes that merely require traveling from point A to point B. There are no bonus objectives, no real puzzles, no items to collect other than health and ammo, and no rewards for completing levels within certain parameters. Rihanna and Zia learn new moves periodically, though, like this spinning attack thing. Yeah, that just looks silly. I know stormtroopers aren't exactly a formidable foe in Star Wars games, but come on, a little respect for the forces of evil, please. There's the usual expanded universe story about some sinister guy who looks vaguely like Darth Maul doing something nasty to people in a vague, expository way. He must be using the drugs to increase production. Believe it or not, that's supposed to be Princess Leia. It doesn't matter. But the story is secondary to shooting humanoids and leaping through obstacles like Mary Lou Retton pursued by the KGB. Not a lot of substance, but pleasantly entertaining. These people are of no use now. 
Lethal Alliance comes really close to being something special, but ends up in the fun weekend rental category. Hopefully, Rihanna and Zio will be back in an adventure with a tad more meat to it. It's been successful. A three. Thanks, Zio. Out of five. In my opinion, the most lethal alliance ever was Shelley Long and Bette Midler and Outrageous Fortune. Those women managed to destroy... Very nice. Ooh, I'm glad Simon's not here to tell me that I suck. <laughs> ah, good Simon, really. <laughs> Randy's worth that. First up, we have a full-body armor suit named the Trojan. That's right. It was inspired by the game Halo and made with the input of soldiers currently stationed in Iraq and Afghanistan. Inventor Troy Herbatis, I knew I was going to mess that name up, um, from Project Grizzly, designed this as a protective exoskeleton for police and the military. It can withstand gunshots, grenades, knives. It has a magnetic gun holster and weighs 30 pounds while still remaining very flexible. And it's, you know, it's actually kind of a sad story. Uh, Mr. Herdebeis, I believe, spent his family's entire life savings on building the suit. Wow. Now they're being evicted from their house. Oh. So hopefully it can stop bulldozers. Don't that's, think it can. That's horrible. He's begrudgingly selling off the suit to want to be Master Chiefs in order to pay his bills. Currently going for $15,300 with 36 bids, and yet I've seen documentary after documentary on this guy, like he really is a good dude who made the suit to really protect our troops, so. I think like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, or someone with a lot of money, Oprah, they should just, you know, right. give him lots of money and buy it. Maybe he should out. print out a, a check from thesecret.com and really wish he had that money. Yes. It'll come true. That's, visualize it, honey, and you'll sell that stuff. Hit. Lexus from Minority Report. That's right, the flagship car from Toyota's luxury division in model year 2054. Yeah, this car was built by Lexus for the movie that starred Tom Cruise as a future cop, and uh, he caught future murderers. So now you can own this car, which is only one of three in the world, and it's the only one that's, uh, that's actually colored black in existence. So And you can own something exclusive. that Tom Cruise sat in before he was crazy. <laughs> I, don't, that's I think that's cool. debatable. Tom Cruise has always been a little bit of a... Right, but now it's out. And that's true. Has, that is so, true. Very yeah. true. He was a closet crazy person. The, the car, which is street legal in some states, reportedly cost up to $145,000 to make. But you can buy it now for the low, low price of only 88 large. I, I actually think it's kind of a cool car. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's There's nothing cool. worse than buying, like, getting a car and then seeing 40,000 other people driving it or being, like, stuck in traffic and everybody has the same car as you. Right. That won't happen. And no one else can say they have it because it's from Minority Report. And I bet it still smells like Tom. Hey, his signature scent, whatever that is, crazy. Exactly. Always expect the unexpected. Dig Saver turns Dig.com slash face toys from the Dig Labs into two very cool and very nerdy screen savers. Watch each story as it is dug live. You have the option of watching Dig Stack, which shows each headline fall as it is dug. Or Dig Swarm, where you can see diggers swarm around the most active stories. And the stories grow bigger each time it gets a vote. Next, the blue screen screensaver simulates a very real-looking Windows crash, including the dreaded blue screen of death and a reboot into Windows, followed by another crash and reboot every 15 seconds or so. We like to use this one less as a screensaver and more like a prank that you install on your friend's computer. And the best part is that this screensaver is free, directly from Microsoft. And if it's free, it's me. And finally, our favorite open source screensaver is Electric Sheet named after a Philip K. Dick novel. When your computer goes to sleep, your electric sheet screensaver communicates over the internet with other computers running electric sheets to share in the work of creating abstract morphing animations known as sheets. Each sheet simulation or animation is about four seconds long and morphs into the next sheet as soon as it's downloaded. And while the screensaver runs, you use your keyboard to vote for your favorite sheet and increase their chances of being shared. It's actually really cool. Check it out. Open water too. Tread harder. There's a, there's a, first of all, there's a lot of these direct-to-DVD movies that you're going to dismiss off the bat. 90% yeah. of the time, you should. This is not it's another round one and a half of, of two people bobbing no. up and down. This is not one of them. In the original Open Water, the enemy. Oh look, there we go. The enemy were was the snakes. In this, the enemy is human stupidity. Um, oh, okay. These people jump that. off of the yacht and uh, they realize there's no ladder to get back on the yacht. And there's a baby on the yacht that uh, if they don't get to it anytime soon is going to miss uh, nappy time. But but I'll tell you what, it's an incredible... <laughs> what? Look, you, Chris, that's so terrible. 
all. Take my word for it. This film is incredibly suspenseful. It's the only thing I can compare it to is like the normally descent. there's a bomb on a bus, but now you're like, oh, there's a baby on a yacht. There's a no baby on and a yacht. And they don't have a ladder. But, but the thing is, is you <laughs> put yourself in their position where you know how can you? It's such a simple thing. How are we going to get back on the yacht? And it's based on a true story. <laughs> What, what must have happened with this is there was a script that was floating around, floating around, uh -huh, yeah. and, and it was similar to Open Water. They slapped Open Water, too. This film is much better than that. It's directed like an art film. This year, right. directed okay. like a job. Bottom line with this Bottom line, rent this movie. There's not enough extras to, say, go out and buy it, okay. but rent Open Water, too. You will be scared. <laughs> I wonder Trust if the guys behind the prestige are a little bummed that you gave it the, you gave it the same rent that you gave Open Water, I, too. I have, my, I have my reasons. I have my reasons. All right, and, and you stick to them, and we Thank appreciate you. it. If you're a fan of Best in Show, Christopher Guest's other work, don't miss this right. one. Now, we are doing something very special today. You're about to review four movies that were only released on DVD. I see them in the rental store and wonder, can they actually be any good? Well, you are actually taking the risk for us. You're, you watch them. Now, tell us about them. Well, uh, yeah, first of all, you've got Incubus with Tara Reid, and uh, oh, it's, it's like a ghost story thing, and Tara Reid's in it, and uh, the bottom line with this one is, it's it's just god awful where there's oh. practically no story. It's one of those things where it's like they had uh, enough money for special effects for maybe two minutes of the film, and it's drawn out Tara Reid. Um, she gets bloody at one point, but that's about it. That one that one you can skip. Wow. That's a pass. Uh, Dead Mary with Dominique Swain, who is in the studio. Uh, yeah, we have recently. the same publicist. Nice um, girl. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Good. She's very sweet. Well, maybe you should give her some advice to say uh, <laughs> she should not have gone to Canada to make this um, trapped in a cabin movie. Uh, it's one of those where there's supposed to be a monster, but the, the monster are, are all these couples that are, you, you know, somehow they just don't get along and end up killing each other and turning into monsters. Wow. Uh, but it's not, but not in the fun way, like Evil Dead. <laughs> not evil Dead, fun. fun. So Drama with these people getting killed, pass? not so fun. Pass on that pass. one too. Sublime, uh, which is Tom Cavanaugh in, in a hospital. Um, he has sex with a girl with a back tattoo, which is probably... Tom Cavanaugh from Ed? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which is, it's, it's like the two minutes that you need to see is that. Um, he gets his leg chopped off. He's ch trapped in this hospital. Uh, the hospital's very creepy, and nothing happens. Is it supposed to be like hostile or something? Uh, no, it's not like hostile. He's just, he's he just keeps trapped. having these visions. Are the visions real? Are they not? Hmm. You know so what? what's your bottom line? Uh, not. It's a pass on that one, too. And then uh, a dead calling, uh, another one... This is just another one of those, in like, direct-to-DVD things hmm. uh, with nobody in it. Nobody in that, it. Yeah, it's just, the thing is, there's so many of these on the shelf. I'd let you know if there was a good one. I, I, I feel these so are bad. Just all... Wait, are you about to say pass on this one? Yes, too? I'm about to. Pass. poor Chris Gore, we made you go home and watch these horrible movies. Well, this is why they have the fast-forward button, because I get right to oh. where, show me it's... the blood, guts, and gore. So we've got four, and you pass on all of four, them. Four, and they all are going away. Stop. Folks, uh, they're gone. <laughs> thanks so gone. much, Chris Gore. Thank and you, you guys, visit at filmthreat.com for more info. But right now, it is time... Worst tycoon game. Game tycoon and underwater tycoon. One game hardly works. The other you wish would just stop working. The We Todd Award of the Year goes to you. You might have been Time's Man of the Year, but your lack of grip says that... Hey, watch it! is one such game. We present the final golden mullet of the evening, Mobile Suit Gundam Crossfire. Back when Sony first unveiled PS3 game footage, Gundam was almost too good to believe. Well, the moment of truth is finally here, and there's only one question left to ask. What the f am I looking at? Looks like our lucky day. You'd be due for some luck after ending up in this god-awful game. Despite rolling on Sony's cutting-edge next-gen dubs, Crossfire looks distinctly last-gen. Hell, the ground is reminiscent of Armored Core on the PS1. But looks aren't everything, right? Surely there are redeeming features here somewhere. As with many Gundam games, you choose either the Earth Federation or Xeon side and battle it out during the one-year war through horrifically simplistic missions. There's an attempt to add some strategy with a damage system to let you blow off various body parts, but since the only way to target specific areas of an enemy is this useless zoom view, you're reduced to firing wildly and hoping you hit something important. In between missions, you slog through mind-numbing menus to manage your hangar of mechs and requisition new recruits. I've had more fun applying grout to floor tiles.
Control of all the mechs is sluggish and clunky, and the uncooperative camera is no help at all. Luckily, the enemy isn't really bright enough to pose a significant threat much of the time. What are you doing? You're just standing in my base. Are you two even fighting each other? Everywhere you turn in this game, there's something horrible. I have to warn you, this part may make your eyes bleed. I'm not sure what I like better. The fact that the water behaves like a solid sheet of fabric or the way it occasionally clips through the nearby ground. Protect the media. Media? The word is Medea. Mythological figure? Tragedy by Euripides? Anyone home? What are you doing? I'm kicking you to death pretending you're the game disc. It's amazing that Crossfire looks this bad and yet can't even manage to run smoothly. It's not like we expected a Gundam game to knock it out of the park or anything, but this wouldn't even be acceptable on the PS2, let alone as a launch title for the most advanced next-gen system in existence. I've been hit! It's over! Mobile Suit Gundam Crossfire gets a 1 out of 5 for being shovelware of the highest order. And if you buy it, you're part of the problem. Unfortunately, we've lost. Critical. Now it's time for the X-Play replay. And a two-episode arc on Murphy Brown. Then he went on to be in critically acclaimed crime dramas like The Commish and inspiration for our next game, The Shield. Once in a while, a show about law as a means to order comes along to examine the complexity of the relationship. With the never-growing pile of cop crap on your tube these days, it's nice to know there's a king of the blue hill. I'm trying not to sound too stuffy. Big Mac is here to die for your sins. And man, does this game have a lot of sins. No, not like that. Yeah, like that. Home is, of course, The Barn. The Barn is aptly named for this game. Check out the bovine stumbling of the characters. Witness as they graze hungrily on each other's sound loops. Hey, Vic. Hey, Ronnie. Vic. Hey. Vic's a master of info extraction. You will give Vic what he wants, or you will drink potty water. Don't forget to wipe. A submission meter will appear on the peak of a perp's noggin. Okay, so maybe a little physical persuasion may be necessary. <coughs> Nothing's happening. We'll check back. <coughs> Evidence gathering seemed oddly disjointed. Feel up a batter dresser and a circular shape will appear to clean your badge as you get either hot or cold. Look what I found. The only thing you'll find is drugs or money. This presents Vic with a choice. He can be a dick, or he can be a dick who turns things in. What's this? If Vic takes his ill booty gotten to his locker, it's for his retirement fund. If his badge is red with misdeeds, he may need to take his urban Easter eggs to the evidence desk. This will lower his heat index. The real kick in the oysters concerning the shield game is many of the mission types. They're stealth missions. Vic Mackey does not creep around. 5-0! He kicks down your blind grandmother's door, tears out her spleen, and blows into it like a penny whistle while dancing around her decumbent form, booting her in the sleeping bag of infancy. Another fatal flaw in the game is a sad-ass excuse for bullet distribution. Targeting is more like a blurry drunkard's stare. One good thing does trickle out of the perforated corpse of this game, the voice acting is done completely by the original cast. Damn it. You missed the spotter. Check it out. Didn't mean to interrupt your game of butt darts. Where's the love? You're too dumb to know it, but I'm protecting your ass right now. You got the wrong guy! Either open the back door, or spend the next five years playing blow-up doll to the hard-ons in Chino. It's your call. Where's the love? Blow-up doll. You got the wrong guy! Butt darts. Love. This lad sold you tainted smack. Where do I find the dealer who sold it? The punk ass named Sanchez. One of the dog fighting joint in Long Beach, back at the old meat packing warehouse. There may be something the Shield game's good for. Strike three, brother. You're out. <laughs> the game's not worth the intensity of its source material, so unless you're a glutton for crap. You like candy, baby? As long as it doesn't have nuts. Stay away. A two out of five.
denigrate the television achievements of Michael Chiklis, we would never speak ill of the Shield co-star and West Wing regular CCH Pounder. In crime drama. There's a lot of crap on the boob tube, and a lot of boobs on the crap tube. A glorious symmetry of God's design. Here's our look at the worst TV show games of all time. Just what are the worst TV show video games of all time? Let's just turn on the telly and see. Ah, the Dukes of Hazard. Just two good old boys that never meant to do harm until this game. A game so bad you long for the Johnny Knoxville movie classic, Jackass 2. Sure, all the Hazard residents are here, the inbred cousins, the drug-addled, touchy-feely uncle, the backwoods law enforcement, the redneck. They're so funny. <laughs> but the game isn't. The storyline is weak, and basically it's just driving around Hazard County. Not a lot to do in Hazard County at all. Let's see what else is on. What the hell is this? Starsky and Hutch? Yeah, I remember this nightmare. Who are the ab wizards that came up with this one? A combination of a 70s show your great-grandparents smoked opiates to enjoy, cell shaded graphics, and the same gameplay level after level. No amount of huggy bareness can save this atrocity. Turn on CBS. Welcome to CSI Miami. Ah, David Caruso. Certainly the star of Jade wouldn't be involved in a subpar video game like CSI Miami, would he? This is nothing more than a point and clicker with easily solved mysteries. And throwing an alligator into the mix doesn't make things better. The biggest crime here, David Caruso only appears at the beginning and end of each case. Nice job. Catch your breath, then we'll put your talents to work on another case. I can see the misery in his lifeless eyes. CBS is making me sleepy. Put on MTV. Pimp my ride. Of course, Exhibit is in this game. It's a paycheck. And yes, you do get to pimp rides, so the title is truthful. But there's also that special filler you get like slow drive-bys and dance-offs. A pointless game. But man, doesn't that car look pimped out? Oh my god, that is banging! I can see one of man. Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Leaves. Actually, this game doesn't belong here. We like it. You kidding me? Like that on his street? Woke up this morning and bought myself a bad video game. The Sopranos, a gangster video game. There's a new concept in 92. Playing one of big pussies, thousands of illegitimate kids, you play a low-level Skell and Tony's crew. How mother belief in original. You think hanging out with little Steven and Polly Walnuts would be entertaining? No stupid It's the same old running around, beating up goons, and ordering fine cuisine. But at least there's Vito. I don't love you, Johnny Cakes. I really don't. TV shows and video games, they really go well together, and they keep coming day after day, one after another. When will the madness end? Eh, just turn it off. They're completely forgetting the role-playing game based on designing women, where you had to level up a sassy interior designer in 1980s Atlanta. That was a really bad game. If you'd like to learn more about bad television or bad video games, consider coming over to g4tv.com slash xplay. There, you can make our computer give your computer moving pictures of Adam and I, which you can then play on your Apple brand these A-list game licenses and turn out the kind of kick-ass titles we always dreamed they could be. Here's our look at TV shows that should be games. We love video games. We love television. So let's combine the two with some TV shows that we hope one day will be video games. If there's any justice, they will be. The Golden Girls, taking place between seasons five and six of the geriatric sitcom, Golden Girls The Game allows you to take your beloved senior citizen characters on their morning stroll around the local mall. And their weekly constitutions lead to many adventures and missions, such as avoiding young hooligans, courting elderly widows, and maintaining proper landscaping. Thank you for being a friend indeed. The Playboy Channel. Play along with octogenarian Hugh Hefner as he attempts tantric intercourse with any young female with a dream and a die job. In this Sims-esque romp, learn the proper techniques that got Hugh Hefner where he is. Too bad you'll never see it unless your parents take the damn lock off the cable. Lost. A desert island, a plane crash, mysterious creatures. That's what you want from Lost. However, this first-person shooter is much more like the TV show than you ever dreamed. Nothing happens here either. Just lots and lots of wandering around an island. Yet, you can't stop playing. At least until the end of the third level. Or season, as it were. Small wonder. Now, this is a no-brainer. 
Small Wonder the Game would take place 15 years after the final episode of the seminal, ahead of its time, late 80s sitcom classic. Vicky's back, and she's pissed. Really, really, really pissed. Due to a glitch in her software, Vicky finally snaps, tortures her family, and turns into a rampaging object of destruction full of nothing but fury and vengeance. Revenge is sweet, Vicky. So sweet. Anderson Cooper 360. When it comes to the Earth, there's really only one man that cares. Only one man does what it takes to get the truth to the public. Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper 360 takes Anderson on missions all over the world. From the terrain of Iraq to post-Katrina New Orleans to Las Vegas for NBA All-Star Weekend. The only place Anderson truly fears, the closet. We don't know why. These are just a few of the TV games we'd like to see, and I'll fight till my dying day to see those games. I owe it to our viewers, our fans, and America. In addition to our own opinion of what... With one exception, here's what I recommend. Oh, here we go. You rent and or purchase this uh -huh. if you're in the position where you might have to buy a diamond. If you have to buy okay. a diamond... Show this to perhaps your future fiancé. She's Spent, taken the cubic zirconia. Exactly. 25 bucks will save you right. 2,500 bucks by buying this DVD. Get it? You know that show it to your she'll girlfriend. expect you to put those savings towards the wedding eventually. Right? How could you get a diamond <laughs> when they're chopping off little arms of kids in Africa? You can't do it, and this will prove it. It'll Still save a pass, your cash. though. Still, Still a pass. pass. As to turn off your water service has been submitted to Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. America is under constant threat from any number of nations, philosophies, and low-fat cheeses. But if I had to pick one threat to the dignity of our American way of life I most feared, it would be alien invasion. And here's some perspective. Aliens, little green men, extraterrestrials. Make no mistake, they will kill you. But not before they alienly probe you. Come with me as we look back at a brief history of alien invasion games. Hello, friend. Lesson one, we need better defenses. If Space Invaders tells us anything, it's that our Martian enemy will come in superior numbers. They may move slowly, but with a paltry defense of only one battleship, they will overtake us in no time. The solution is simple. We need to reboot the Reagan-era Star Wars program. If we can build anything half as cool as these 1984 concept designs, We'll be swatting away aliens in no time. Lesson number three, the cute alien. Many in the liberal Hollywood elite would like to have you think that our intergalactic enemies are friendly and sweet. Well, listen up. E.T. is not your friend. Do you really think that's a phone he's building? If you look closely, you'll notice there is something missing from our alien friend. We could not propagate due to our complete and utter lack of genitalia. The truth is, the aliens want our women. Even Superman can't be trusted with our women. You know, Superman has to uh, learn about love. Lesson number three. Fortunately for mankind, we have David Duchovny. In the game X-Files Resist or Serve, Duchovny teaches us that the truth is out there. You just need to look for it. With flashlights and some squishy shoes. Lesson number four, alien-human hybrid. If you find yourself trapped on an enemy ship, you may see things that will haunt your dreams. While we don't know why an advanced alien race would needlessly ram giant metal spikes into an old man's chest... Oh my God, no! We do know that it will cause lasting psychological damage. What the f are those things? That's why we need to have these starships infiltrated by people that are already psychotic. In the game Prey, Tommy beats two hillbillies to near death with a wrench. Sure, it seems like a violent, unnecessary act, but these guys are racist, and we need people with that sense of needless brutality if we're gonna fight an enemy that builds a machine that does this. So, what do we learn? Aliens move slow, want sex, fear David Duchovny, and are sadists. Our best line of defense? Refund the Star Wars program, kill Superman, and infiltrate starships with psychos. What are you looking at? And then, maybe, we can live in peace and get back to killing people from our own planet. It really makes you think. I think. 
This lock automatically shuts down your notebook when you walk more than 10 feet away and then resumes operation when you come back within range. For 60 bucks, this lock is great for keeping snooping office mates from finding all your dirty little secrets like that stockpile of Taylor Hicks MP3s, Kevin. Now, never be afraid to carry your laptop in the rain again with the OtterBox laptop case. This rugged case isn't just waterproof, it's so strong that you can stand on it without doing any damage to your computer. For $170, it is extremely durable, but don't get any bright ideas about taking your laptop in the bathtub or in the swimming pool because it is not intended for underwater use. As with all attack this recommendations, use common sense people, please. Next, check out the lap dog. This portable desk helps reposition your keyboard and screen to an ergonomically correct angle. It's lightweight, easy to assemble, and fold so you can take it when you travel. For $80, it is perfect for using your notebook outdoors, on a chair, or on the floor. It is really meant for the bedroom, and <laughs> look, we guys, you know, I know what you do when you bring your computer into your room, you little dirty dog. Last, check out the Belkin cooling stand. Let's face it, we've all heard about the dangers of laptop batteries catching fire. Have no fear because Belkin has your best interest in mind. Just plug the fan into your laptop's USB port and a fan cools the bottom while raising your screen to a more comfortable level. I actually have this at home. It's also small enough to fit in your bag when you're on the go. For less than $30, it's a small price to pay for protecting the family jewels. That's Sorry. Next, if you've ever considered trying to get a job in the video game industry, check out this month's issue of Tips and Tricks. They look, uh, take a look at the career opportunities for aspiring game professionals and explain the difference between a lead designer and a level designer. Now, a lead designer is the one who conceives the original game idea and creates the backstory and the look for it. After that, the game is passed on to level designers, the people who create the individual levels, but that's just on the development end. There are also jobs in programming, marketing, and testing, or you could even become a game journalist. You know what? Game journalism is actually really cool. Like yeah. some people joke because the you know blogs have come about. Yeah. And it's you know twelve year olds typing like monkeys. But like when you get to a certain level in game journalism, all the companies want to do is get you drunk at their press events. So you so play you their games and you love them. And that's what it is, man. It's free booze, video games, and uh, I was gonna say hot chick, but that really doesn't happen. Well, if you're but. playing drunk, isn't it harder to to win? Doesn't it matter. You're, you're doesn't frustrated? matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, no. It's like it's like driving. Like it makes it more fun. You know? <laughs> you never that had that time where you have to squeeze your left eye so hard just to see one car in front of you? It's like when you're playing a video game, it's like, oh, there could be one boss, but it's like, dude, there's 15 now. And you think Kevin is, is joking, but he's not because he called me the other day and he was like, exactly. I sang a song about it. I'm joking. You don't do that, kids. And, and by the way, it was uh, O'Doul's. So <laughs> just make white. sure when you do it, just strap the belt. You're fine. Uh, Next, be at 500. Know that I can. Ooh, pretty. Yes, it's time for comics, but after this, edition of Fresh Ink, and this is Serious People, some of the Marvel fanboys may be very, very angry at me. You've been warned. Spidey may be cleaning up at the box office, but I'm here at Golden Apple to review some comics. Civil War, Marvel's massive summer event, is at last collected in a shiny trade paperback form, and I'm weighing in with my final verdict. Oh, Civil War, you seem to have everything going for you. Hot hero versus hero action, Steve McNiven's awesome art, and a hot-button issue like superhuman registration, a not-so-veiled metaphor for the Patriot Act and the current war on terror. So what's the downside? Well, to pull this off, Marvel basically had to turn several of their greatest characters, like Mr. Fantastic and Iron Man, into fascist jerks, willing to beat the pulp out of icons like Captain America and Spidey. And it just feels forced. Sure, it's great to see a hardcore fight between Cap and Iron Man, but the motivation just seems shoehorned in so we can get to see heroes smacking heroes. I actually think casual comic book fans or first-time readers will love this mix of gorgeous art and brutal action. But I have to tell you, as a longtime Marvel fangirl, I found some of the plot a little bit contrived. That being said, the pictures are still really, really pretty. Of course, at least one excellent thing came out of Civil War, this new Thunderbolt story arc. The Thunderbolts are a team of Marvel's worst supervillains drafted by the government to capture rebel superheroes. In other words, we get to slip into the boots of the bad guys as they kick the stuffing out of Marvel's unregistered good guys. And thanks to superstar writer Warren Ellis, the bad guys are really, really bad.
Now, while this issue isn't particularly action-packed, it's well worth picking up this series, starting with issue 110, if you can find it, because the darn things are selling out everywhere. And once you read it, you're going to know why. And finally, I saved the best for last. If ever a comic book deserved a swanky hardcover treatment, it's All-Star Superman. I have to confess, I've always found Superman a little lame. He's just too powerful, too good, and he has a cape-wearing super dog. But this series reimagines soups by taking all the sci-fi silliness that always turned me off the Man of Steel and making it cool again. Thanks to some incredible art, a whimsical storyline, and a Lex Luthor who has never seemed more malevolent. In a world where most ultimate or all-star versions of superheroes are dark and brooding, it's great to find something as light and enjoyable as this. Up, up, and away, indeed. You know, I like the Superman, but why do we always buy the major crossovers? They rarely turn out well, and like the Penguin, they waddle away with all your money. Angry fans. Well, it seems that we've been hearing about this long development game since before Reactor Number 4 exploded, you know, radiating everything for hundreds of miles. But let's find out if all the human suffering and development delays have been worth it for gamers. Straight from the heart of the Ukraine, here's Stalker. April 25th, 1986. Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, is announced. Later that night, in an unprecedented PR move, the Chernobyl power plant is blown up, killing thousands, but making millions aware of the upcoming game. March 2nd, 2007. After 21 years of development, the game has gone gold. Much like that intro, this game takes place in an alternate timeline. In 2012, a second disaster rocks Chernobyl, and this time, it's no publicity stunt. The surrounding countryside is cordoned off and is dubbed The Zone. A few hardy souls, known as stalkers, roam the zone searching for valuable artifacts and playing their guitars. Pulled from the wreckage of a truck by a band of zone dwellers, you come to with the case of amnesia, a PDA with the directive, kill the Strelik, and a sweet tack. <laughs> Stalker combines the open world of many recent RPG with the bloodletting of first-person shooters, with mixed results. While the graphics look slightly antiquated, the feel of the game is spot on. Buildings are demolished, cars are rusted out, and the dogs are skinless. In other words, it's exactly how Chernobyl really is. The sound design is very good as well. The comp of your AK-47 is satisfying. And back at camp, it's nice to grab a nice spot by the fire pit and share salami with your comrades. <laughs> oh, God. Who invited him? Roaming the countryside, you face more than bad weather. Rival stalker squads, military units, and mutants populate the zone. Radioactive anomalies are scattered around that have a variety of adverse effects. And power-ups come in the form of little clumps of radioactive material called artifacts that boost your stats and give you radiation sickness. <laughs> <laughs> this game is not do. Your guns jam, your wounds bleed, you're encumbered, you get hungry, your body soaks up radiation like a frozen burrito in a microwave. Nobody likes you, everybody hates you, and this guy won't shut up. However, there are no experience levels, so as long as you have a decent boomstick and are using something other than your tan for Bonnie Arbor, you can pretty much go anywhere. The game was released with a few anomalies of its own and was patched on release. So, once you exterminate the bugs and survive the dead man's learning curve, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is an innovative mutation of an RPG, a shooter, and Russia for dummies on CD. Will he kill? <laughs> an entertaining attempt at splicing the genre genes, the x play Geiger counter registers four plays. I'm begging you, please do it. Out of five. I guess the silver lining in Chernobyl's dark clouds was soccer. Or it could have been the high, lethal, highly radioactive strontium-90 ejected from the core into the atmosphere during the catastrophe. Well, unfortunately, there were two silver linings. The world didn't need any more cancer made formative and disturbing, mm -hmm. which is really the best, best kind. I mean, it's a bit, bit sexy. That's right. That's now, pleasuring yourself can lead to a broad range of emotions. Yeah. Ecstasy, joy, yeah. a, a little shame. Yeah. Sometimes confusion. Yeah. Yeah, but don't worry. That's where mom comes in to clear things up. Oh, 
Excuse me, Ricky. Ricky, I did see what you were doing. It felt good, didn't it? It's all right. We all have feelings like this sometimes. I'm just glad you're doing this in the privacy of your own room. <laughs> I love how the mom is <sighs> the door and he's still like bouncing. He's still going. He's, he's not still stopping. Going. But it's under the blanket. It's fine. <laughs> I don't get with the kid. The kid, look at the way he's checking out his mom, though. Look at that Aww. stare. Like... I think this educational film needs to be more about like the like an Oedipus complex and maybe less she, about self-pleasure. Maybe she breastfed too long. He's like.